Welcome to today's lecture on storyboards and flowcharts. This lecture is brought to you by Lake Mineola High School and is designed for the Game Simulation and Animation Foundations course. Our central question for today is how does storyboarding and flowcharting assist developers in the game design industry? And first we must look at our storyboards. So storyboards are defined as visualizations of game events in the pre-designed stages of development. This allows the programmers to see what is happening, how the scene looks, and the camera angles used throughout the game. Artists add notes to the storyboards to describe the important features such as actions and or camera angles, lighting, colors, etc. So how do you storyboard? Well, storyboarding a game can be completed using a step-by-step -step process. Step one, you'd have to look at your script, then you'd have to look at step two, which is your characters, step three, your world, step four, drafting, and step five, tweaking and finalizing your storyboard. Looking at step one, our script, we have to write, read, and interpret the script of the story to understand the theme, setting, mood, and other elements. It is vital information that is contained in the text of a game story, so you must read it carefully and write very descriptively. So what do you do? Highlight major scenes, characters, and events that are used to progress the storyline. Looking at step two, the characters. Knowing the characters helps the artist to personalize the story by adding human elements and characteristics to the character art. What this means is the character personality is critical throughout the gameplay and must be reflected in the actions as well as the appearance of the actual character. So what should you do to storyboard? Practice drawing the character from various angles. Moving to step three, the world. Knowing the environment is a critical piece of game art due to its ability to determine the settings, themes, and moods experienced throughout gameplay. You have to refer to color and form psychology as a means to determine the player's interpretation as it pertains to the shape and color throughout the gameplay. What should you do? Practice drawing various scenes and objects that are used throughout the story. Step four, drafting. Compile all the information from the story, the characters, and the world to form a coherent sequence of events with simple depictions. Simple is better at this point as it allows you to get a full scene on paper without concerning too many objects or details. What should you do? Draw the simple elements of the scene, including the world objects and the characters to depict the story events. And then move to step five, where you finalize. Add the details. Making the notes throughout your storyboard will help designers to create scenes, objects, characters, lighting conditions, camera angles, and more. So what should you do? Make notes on all of the scenes throughout the storyboard, commenting on the theme, the mood, the camera angles, event explanations, and more. Looking now at flowcharts. Flowcharts are tools used by game designers to create a visualization of a sequence of events. Flowcharts may be used for outlining stories and or programs. Storyboards are often used to flowchart story events, but stories can still be outlined in a simple chart. So how would you organize a flowchart? Well, flowcharts are visual elements of a sequence of events. So graphic organizers are used to show the progress from one event to another. For example, at 5.30 a.m., I'm at home, I wake up. At 6 a.m., I'm still at home, and then I go to my car to leave. At 6.30 a.m., I reach Lake Mineola High School. I park my car at work. At 6.35 a.m., I'm still at Lake Mineola High School. I check in at the LMHS desk and go to my classroom. At 7.20 a.m., I have my first class at Lake Mineola High School. At 2.30 p.m. at Lake Mineola, my day ends. At 3 p.m., I go to my car, which is in the parking lot at Lake Mineola. I go to my car to leave. This is a very simple example of how a flowchart can be used to show a depiction of one event to another. So flowcharts for stories, how do you do it? 
Flowcharting a story is equivalent to outlining the plot. We view a sequence of events, but not the scenes. This is how flowcharts differ from storyboards. So creating a flowchart for a story can be done with a step-by-step -step process. And we have three steps. The first step is identify the characters and the settings. The second step is identify the story event. And finally, repeat the process until the entire flowchart is done. So step one. Identify who, when, and where story events are taking place. Who tells the audience which character in the story is taking part in the action? And when and where tells the audience the location, the mood, and the theme in which the action takes place. So what should you do? Ask yourself, who is involved in the scene, and when and where are they located? Step 2. Identify the story events. Identifying the actions that are taking place during the scene is critical. Actions in a scene can be, impact the story in a major or minor way, thus impacting the plot development of the entire story. So what should you do when you're flowcharting? Ask yourself, what is happening in the scene, and how is it happening? Step 3, where you're repeating the process until the entire flowchart is done. What you're going to do is as the story progresses and more scenes are developed, the major plot of the story is revealed to the audience. What should you do? Continue the, to the next scene within the story and repeat steps 1 and 2 until the entire story is outlined in the flowchart. Flowcharts for programs. Well, we said flowcharts for stories can work, but we also said we can flowchart our program. So there are a couple different methods. Computer programmers use flowcharts to outline the applications. We have method one, which outlines the graphical elements, such as the menus, the buttons, etc. And method two outlines the code structure with Suedo code and notes. We can use a step-by-step -step process for either method. Step one, we would have to identify the start and initial events. And step two, we would have to identify the options and scenarios. And finally, step three, we will have to repeat the process until the entire program is outlined. So looking at step one, step one is identifying the start and initial events. At the start of a program, designers must identify the elements contained within the first section encountered by the end user. In the GUI, the graphical user interface, this would be the start menu. However, in code, this would be event handlers and commands. So what should you do? If you're working on the GUI, outline the menu identifying the controls. If you're working on the code, identify what commands and listeners are needed to respond to the user inputs. Step two, identify your options and scenarios. Options allow end users to interact with a program in unique ways, and designers must prepare for scenarios that will be encountered by the majority of end users. In the GUI, this would be a complex menu interface, settings, etc. And in code, this would be event handlers, commands, and conditionals. So what should you do? Working on the GUI, outline the controls that provide navigation or access to program settings. In the code, identify the necessary listeners and commands used to navigate and create conditional statements to create scenarios within the code. And finally, step three, repeat this process until the entire program is written. As programs become increasingly complex, flowcharts may be used to remove problems prior to being developed. So what should you do as a flowcharting? So what should you do as a person who's flowcharting a program? For the GUI, create a visual of every scene that contains controls. This is very similar to creating a storyboard but instead of for a story, you're creating it for a program. What should you do if you're working on the code? Outline the code with a detailed flowchart that allows the designer to easily trace scenarios and debug the issues. So at this point, rate your understanding of the material. If you feel you need to review the material once more, please do so. However, if you have any questions, please contact your instructor.